Hey, you guys, it's me, Liz, from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. I'm coming to you live today from my home in St. Mary's Point. It's like a suburb of Afton, Minnesota. Population of St. Mary's Point is 300-ish. Mm, we are on the St. Croix River. We can see Wisconsin from here. Um, my shop, Liza Jane Designs, is in Afton. Today, I am filling in for Linda D'Antonio of, oh heck, I know the name of her shop in Hyannis. She has a wonderful, I've been there in Hyannis, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Seaporium is the name of her shop and she is um, not able to be with us today. So let's send some good energy and positive vibes her way, but I'm gonna be with you. I'm getting super fancy with StreamYard and I'm going to turn off this scrolling thing. I'm going to turn it off right now if I can figure out how. Banner off there. I'm going to bring on a second camera. I have three cameras that I'm trying to work today. I want to show you what we're going to work on. So here goes with this camera. We are going to be making a, a bunting banner things. So this one says Maker's Market, and I'm going to make another one just like it to use for a sale that I am doing this weekend. Whoops, there's some more IOD in my home. So you can see the banner. Let me see. Yeah, I can zoom in like that so you can see that. Um, that is our project for today. And it's very versatile to use for a graduation or birthday, any kind of occasion or just happy messages, you know, just celebrating sunshine. So I hope people can hear me. I'm gonna turn this camera back off and sit back down here. Here's what we're gonna be using today. I have a paper bunting that I purchased. I don't remember and it doesn't really matter. It's um, done on cardstock. We're gonna take a look at this. You could make your own. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that, but you could buy them on Amazon or Michael's, Joann's, any kind of art supply places probably have them. It's cardstock, and you can see the size. It's you know bigger, bigger than my hand. And this particular one has twelve little triangles, cardstock weight, and it's joined across the top with a ribbon. So you could make your own. Um, any size, but I think I paid five dollars for this. It was well worth for me not having to do it myself. So I'm going to turn the camera. We're going to go down on the work table here. Can people hear me? I hope people can hear. I have one thumb up, so that's good. I'm going to turn my turning my face back on because that muted my um, my microphone too. Let me see if I can make this work or this way. I want me to be smaller and my hands to be the focus, but if I can't figure that out, Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to just try quickly 
to switch this up. Yeah. I want this to be the focus. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. But we're gonna. That's my grandson in the background. He's four years old and he promised he was going to be quiet as a little church mouse. Unfortunately, he doesn't really know how quiet church mice are. Oh, you guys. That's what happens when I try to get fancy, doesn't it? I'm going to exit full screen. I'm going to go back to try to get, turn this microphone on. All right, well, let's just do it. Let's just do it. I was Finnegan expressing his desire to not go in timeout. I think he's going to go in timeout for a little bit until he learns how quiet church mice are. So we have our banner. I want to unmute this microphone. Mic is muted. There. I think I've got now. I think I've got it now. Is the sound okay on that? You guys are dropping like flies and I don't blame you. Boom. Turn off the sound on that. Okay, back. I have my cardstock banner. Um, this is what this guy will look like. I showed you the one in real life in my living room here. I am going to be using the new Le Cor I don't even know how to say it. Le Courier, Le Courier um, stamp. This is one of the, the newest stamps from Iron Orchid Design. So we're going to be using this for our backgrounds. We're going to be using the IOD Retro stamp. And we are going to be using lots and bits and bobs of transfer pieces. Something, if you've been using IOD products for a while, if you've used the transfers, you know that you can get, get quite a collection of transfer pieces that you think, oh, these are so little, I'll never use, use this. But I'm here to tell you, the smallest pieces can come in handy. So don't give up on those little tiny ones. Find a, a box or a plastic bag or something to keep them in. Uh, I thought I would demo because, you know, when I first became familiar with Iron Orchid Designs, I didn't even know how to fill a stamp pad. So I thought, well, let me demo that while I have to um, do a new one. I'm going to use the Stone Gray Decor Ink for Le Courier or Le Courier or whatever it's called, the newsprint one. And I want that to kind of fade into the background a little bit. So I am going to use Stone Gray Ink to stamp that. Then when I do the retro letters, I'm going to stamp those with black ink. So they're more in, appear more in the forefront. So this is how you fill a stamp pad. You take your, your bottle of decor ink and squeeze it onto the surface of the pad. I'm going to just, I'm not squeezing now. I'm just going in circles and trying to get that stone gray ink to sink into the pad. Now this is pretty basic stuff, but if you've never done it, you don't know. So I think that's important for me to remember. I was new to this not all that long ago. 
and we're all at different spots in our creative journey. So back to craft supplies 101 here with how to fill this ink pad with enough juicy stone gray ink to work on our backgrounds. We're gonna be using the masks that were included in the retro stamp pad. I think I've got enough ink on that. I'm gonna put the lid on these new stackable ink pads, put the cover back on my, and I'm gonna maybe, I don't know, bring this down a little closer. That's probably good. So I have a plastic bin. Oh, it's right behind me. So I have this, these um, scrapbook paper storage things work really well for me for storing my stamps. Now that Iron Orchid Designs has come out with the, um, with the envelopes, for some of my stamp sets, I use the envelopes and they still fit inside of this. So we're going to start stamping the background, but I want to use the masks of these stamps so that I don't, well, so that area stays clean and clear. So I pulled out the masks I'm going to need. I'm going to make another bunting that says Maker's Market. So I've got those, but I got to tell you guys, I lost the letter M uh, from my masks. That's going to happen sometimes if you lose a mask you can create your own like like we did in the olden days last year before iod started uh, providing us masks with all the stamps so if you lose one or you need an extra one all you need to do i've got my stamps set out here i'm going to take that letter m and i'm going to use a black stamp pad get this one wet with the black or get this inked up and stamp this plain old piece of computer paper here because i'm only using this as a mask i'm not too fussy about the extra marks i've got that stamped and i'm just going to cut it out so that this will be my mask for the letter M. And this is a great thing to do if like me, you drop your mask somewhere. And because this particular version of them is clear acetate, I, I couldn't find it after I dropped it. I, it'll probably turn up because I was in one place. It can't have walked away. They don't have legs but I can't find it. So I'm cutting a mask out of plain old computer printer paper. And there I have a new M mask. So coming back to our banner, I'm gonna cut the banner in half because I, I'm doing one that says market and one that says makers. So I only need six triangles. Um, I add extra ribbon. I just staple it onto the cardstock. So I, I want it to be like I showed you early at the start of the video where it's in tiers kind of. It says makers on the top and then market. And obviously you will have all sorts of variety of sizes that you want to make if you have a, a birthday name or a graduation party, you will make your banner the size that you want. So I'm just going to cut this in half right here so it's easier to work with. I have six triangles for 
mark it. I'm going to fold those over a bit and just make sure when I do them that I've got the right, the right angle. There's the bunting, the courier, courier stamp is the one I'm going to be using first. So get this out of the way. And we will start with the masks. Can you see okay? I hope so. Everything out of the way here. I'm going to start with the letter M right here. So that's my first mask. I'm going to use the paper mask. And I'm just coming down and estimating. Now a couple of inches from the top. That's my M mask. I'm going to take that stamp pad we just filled with stone gray ink and I'm going to use different parts of this newsprint courier stamp set to I'm going to ink it up and place keep the mask in place stamp over that letter M and hope that I've inked the right places. Whoops, it wiggled. Let's put that back. Get that out of the way. So there it is. It scared me at first because it disappeared, but boom, there's my masked off area. I'm just going to bring that down so I have the full bunting piece covered. And I'm going to move on to the A for market. I made a little bit of a mess here, but this is just the background. I can cover that over with transfer a bit. I can just say, you know what? It's a background. It's fine. I'm going to find my A from the real IOD masks. And because I've stamped over it already, it's easier to see now. So I'm gonna put that down again, a couple of inches from the top. I'm gonna to get this out of my way, maybe cover that over so I don't make a mess on it. I mean, ditto this one, I'll cover those. So when I stamp, I just get the stamp where I want it to be. You guys, that's a giant stamp. How could I lose it? Joe, here's the big stamp. Big stamp, different area. I'm gonna use a different part of it here because I want variety in the bunting and the different panels. So this time I'm gonna start down here. Whoops, the A slipped off. Did it stick to my, it did, it's right here. So I'm putting that back down. We could tape this down if we wanted to um, or apply, uh, but I think that's good. There is my A masked off. Moving on to the next one, I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna find the R for market. We'll put that guy there. I'm gonna cover the other one so I don't get it messy. A little more ink on here. And you get the drip, the drift or the gist, right? That we're inking up the courier using the mask to keep that place nice and white and clear so that when I stamp, that letter, it's got a nice background it's coming down, making sure it's full. I want all the parts of that covered. So here is M-A-R. We're going to come with a K. So what, what do you think? What, what kind of buntings might you be interested in making? I'm getting lots of invitations now to graduation parties, um, 
you know, maybe a casual outdoor wedding reception or in this part of the country in um, Minnesota and Wisconsin, uh, barn wedding receptions are very popular. And I can see, you know, dressing up a barn type of a venue with, we're looking for the K, with these kinds of buntings. I love a nice bunting. It's just so celebratory and happy. There's this one. Stamp is inked up. I've protected those a bit. Covering that one. Boom. The K area has been protected, I think, right next to it. I want some type right there. So there, there's the K. We'll go on with the E and the T quickly, and then we will start stamping with the retro stamp. M-A-R-K. Let's see if my E is handy here. They're so hard to see until they get some ink on them. If I don't see the E, we'll just move on. Skip over the E, go right to the T. And I may have to make a, a paper mask for that if I can't find it. Nope, not seeing the E. These are very easy to lose. So what I do, um, once I take them out of their envelope or the acetate envelope or punch them out of their background, I like to put them in a regular mailing envelope, like a letter size or legal size mailing envelope so that I can keep track of my masks. They're so little and easy to lose, especially when you're a little bit scatterbrained and got all your art supplies out at once. So the T is masked off. It's, that's okay with me. I'll have to come back to the E later. This ink dries very quickly, but I want to be a little bit careful and mindful here. Um, coming back to, this is the M. I'm going to cover this guy up with its lid and put it safely out of the way and turn to a black ink pad now to do the stamping of the retro letters. So I picked out all the ones that I need. If you're watching um, the IOD page, I'm going to bet that most of you have used these stamps before. So, you know, when you open them, you, you, Condition them by giving them a quick sand. M A. There's the T and the K and the R and the E. So maybe we'll find another way to do the, the E when we get that far. But I'm going to now use the stamps. I'm going to stamp naked, meaning I'm not naked, heavens to Betsy, but I'm not going to use uh, an acrylic block or even a any kind of sheet. I'm going to just stamp. I'll put the ink on the stamp and put it into the area that I masked off previously. And hopefully, because I'm using black ink, there, that sticks out pretty well, right? So the M, I'm going to be painting this later in here. So these spots that are imperfect, it's okay with me. Um, I'm, I'm going to come in with some chalk style paint. What I did with the one I made first was to water it down quite a bit. I used a few different shades of blue. So we're going to get to that. 
because by the time I'm done stamping all these, I think the ink will be dry enough to start painting. I'm gonna wipe, because even though I don't mind the imperfection, I don't need to um, invite more of it than I'm gonna get naturally. So here's the A. It's a little wampus, but you know, it's gonna hang okay. So there's my, whoops, there is that. We're gonna come in with the letter R. Yesterday, when I made the first one, the sample, my daughter, Stacy, called me. I was making, I was making the, the banner to say maker, but I, but I spelled it wrong. <laughs> so I ended up with, it was going to be marker because I put the R. So that's when I quick uh, snipped it up the middle and turned the, the first one into market and the second one became maker. So R, I hope you can see what a, a fine difference using the masks makes. You get a nice clean, and you know, you say, well, if I'm gonna paint over it anyway, why do I need to mask? And you probably have a good point there, except I think when I water down the paint and I can see through it a little bit, I, I'm just happier with a cleaner background. I'm going to stamp right over this. This is not, this is not the, the best. It would be best if I cut out another mask. Oh, you know what, you guys, I found the E. So let's just go back and do that. This is getting a little bit messy. Dirty fingers. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to gently just put black ink on here. I'm not going to load it up a lot for the sake of, of here. And live TV. We're just going to use what I have on there. Now the E, black ink, a little more juicy on it. So I'm going to juicify the, the E and place it right here. <laughs> you guys, this is a day in the life of a multi-generational household. We have three generations living in my home right now. It's delightful, full of love and activity, and sometimes a little bit loud. So, pardon the noise in the background. He's being lovingly cared for by his mom. And there we go. Mark it. Um, so we're ready. Next is painting. So I am going to take the palette that I, the very fancy palette I put together yesterday is right here. Can you see it? Yes, you can. It's just, I used, um, I used the acetate that the stamps come in and I squeezed and spooned some paint onto it. I covered it over with plastic wrap last night so it wouldn't dry out. I have a very professional and handy palette here that also serves, well, not once you put paint in it, but before you put paint in it, it's nice for packing lunches. So it's got a side. I could put paint. I have water over here. I'm going to grab my paintbrush and go with these blue, different blue and white chalky style paints on here. Get a little bit wet and start painting inside my blocks. 
So I just go right up to the edge there and I'm painting inside of the retro stamp. I like to bring in different shades of the same colors so it doesn't read so flat. So I'm using um, dark and bright and light and white and just kind of blending them right inside the letter. It's going on thinly. So it's going to dry quickly. And there's that. I have my letter M. I'm going to come across and we're going to do that same thing with all of these letters. Um, I like a little bit of variety, so that is why I'm choosing the different colors of blue and blending them. So it'll all be blue and so nice and cohesive, but different tones and shades. So it'll also be interesting. Not just cohesive, but interesting and cohesive. So here I go up to that edge with my A. So you see this can be a very quick, I'm coming in here with white, which isn't really going to show up very well, but I'm doing that so then I can add blue and blend it into different colors. I'm moving pretty quickly for the sake of live video. But I also think, you know, I don't, I like seeing the strokes. It doesn't have to be a fussy, long, drawn out process. If you've got boatloads of banners and buntings to make, you can make a quick, quick job of it with the right paint and the right paintbrush and just move it on down. So there is M A R, there's K. Bring this color blue and a little bit of this color blue. This one's brighter. Just lay those down and kind of blend them together. Making sure you can see me here. Here we go. A little bit of water on there just to give it some translucence. There we go. Um, when I finished the first bunting. I, I sealed it all up with wax. I don't know if we'll have a chance to get to that step today. If we do, great. If we don't, um, it's just a matter of applying clear wax to seal the paint and to seal the transfers, which we're going to get to here in a on to paper. Um, let's try this periwinkle color. That's really pretty. Uh, so we're going to get to transfer scraps here in a few minutes. I like to seal that up both because I'm hoping to use these buntings more than one time.
I don't think you could hear me there. I am working on all those things. I hope you were able to hear. I, I'm just, again, covering for Linda from Seaporium, Hyannis, Massachusetts. I hope you were able to hear me throughout. Um, I, I was watching, so I know you could see the process. And if you couldn't hear me, it's pretty self-explanatory. We've done the bunting banner. I'm going to show you the finished product again, if I can zoom in on that. I don't know that I can, but you can see it on my fireplace over here. Welcome to my, my home. <laughs> so there's the finished banner. Mine again says Maker's Market. I'm using it for a show here in Afton this weekend, but you can make a banner that says whatever you want it to say for anyone at all, um, graduations, birthdays, welcome home, whatever message suits your fancy. So I'm gonna get ready to sign off. I will go back and see what kind of comments might have come in if anyone asks questions. Um, sending Linda D'Antonio best, best wishes and hope she gets well soon. Um, hope to see you again on the Iron Orchid Designs page. Thanks for joining today. And do let me know if any questions, if you need to find a stockist near you, go to the ironorchiddesigns.com webpage. There's a store locator, a retailer, a stockist locator. You can search by location. So find yourself a local stockist and you will have a friend for life. So great to see you guys or have you see me today. Um, I've enjoyed it a lot. I hope it was worthwhile. Bye till next time.